Good morning. Uh, it's good to have you all here and good to be with you here this morning on the 16th Sunday after Trinity. There aren't a ton of announcements in the bulletin, uh, save this one that you probably all have noticed uh, by now. Our front door works. It does work, I, I think. I'm pretty sure. I didn't use it this morning. I went in the side door. But uh, as you know, when the storms came through that other week, uh, they blew our front door off, and uh, for the last couple weeks, we've been un unable to use it, which means we had to go inside entrance there, uh, but they are fixed now, so we are thankful for that blessing of God to be able to have our doors uh, in working order again uh, to make it a little bit easier to get into here. Uh, so that is fantastic. Um, there is a note about the citywide uh, cleanup and garage sales coming up. That is going to come up quickly. Uh, the sales are going to be on the 2nd, and then the cleanup is going to be on Monday the 4th. And we had talked a little bit about doing some cleanup here at church. So maybe if you're interested in helping with that, uh, get a hold of me, and we'll, we'll put something together. We have some things uh, that we probably could do away with. So uh, that will be coming up decently soon. Uh, there is a note here also on Tuesday. Our Bible study has started again. Uh, so we are going to meet over here in the wing. Uh, it seemed to work well for the live stream last week. If you're available Tuesday night at 6.30, we will continue our Bible study. So that will be coming up again this week on Tuesday. Um, and then you can see in the bulletin today that there is a rite of blessing for a Bible we have up on the altar here. We have a new confirmation student that started this week. Uh, and uh, we are beginning our work with the Old Testament, and then next year we'll be in the New Testament, and so it's good that we have a blessing of the Bible for our students, and uh, she isn't here, so I will give it to her this week, but that will be after the sermon. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn 793, hymn 793.
This morning we follow divine service setting four, beginning on page 203. I invite you to stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, Call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 30. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes with the morning. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cry to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you have brought up my soul from Sheol. You restored me to life from among those who go down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his saints, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, You made my mountain stand strong. You hid your face. I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cry, and to the Lord I plead for mercy. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me, O Lord, be my helper. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have loosed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness, that my glory may sing your praise and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes with the morning. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we pray that your grace may always go before and follow after us, that we may continually be given to all good works. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the 16th Sunday after Trinity is from 1 Kings chapter 17. After this, the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became ill, and his illness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. And she said to Elijah, What have you against me, O man of God? You have come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to cause the death of my son. And he said to her, Give me your son. And he took him from her arms and carried him up into the upper chamber where he lodged, and laid him on his own bed. And he cried to the Lord, O Lord my God, have you brought calamity even upon the widow with whom I sojourn by killing her son? Then he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried to the Lord, O Lord my God, let this child's life come into him again. And the Lord listened to the voice of Elijah. And the life of the child came into him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper chamber into the house and delivered him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son lives. And the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 3. So I ask you not to lose heart over what I am suffering for you, which is your glory. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. 
Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a great crowd went with him. As he drew near to the gate of the town, behold, a man who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a considerable crowd from the town was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came up and touched the bier, and the bearers stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. And the dead man sat up and began to speak. And Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has arisen among us, and God has visited his people. And this report about him spread throughout the whole of Judea and all the surrounding country. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us together confess our faith as Christians using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with the hymn of the day, hymn 758.
as well by you the victory reaping. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text this Sunday, the 16th after Trinity, is our epistle reading, Ephesians chapter 3. We heard in our gospel reading the account of our Lord's travel through the town of Nain. St. Luke wrote that as our Lord approached the town with his disciples and a large crowd in tow, he was met by another large crowd leaving the town, and it was a funeral procession. They were mourning the death of an only son and he of a woman who was already a widow. And when our Lord saw her, he had compassion. He had the procession stop. He then went and touched the coffin and he said to the young man, Young man, I say to you, arise. And then he did. The young man rose, he began talking, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. The Lord here demonstrated his compassion along with both his willingness and his ability to deliver even from death. For those who are in Christ, nothing can separate them from his love, neither suffering nor death. This was St. Paul's confidence as he wrote to the Ephesians, encouraging them not to lose heart over his suffering on their behalf. For his part, Paul knew that earthly suffering was part of his call from the Lord, and indeed all of the apostles suffered in their bodies for the sake of the gospel. And it can be said that suffering for the faith is a mark of all Christians, especially of those who preach the gospel. Paul's confidence was built upon the fact that out of love, Christ had already delivered him many times and would do so again. Therefore, he encouraged the Ephesians to not lose heart over suffering, but instead to take hold of the strength that Christ supplies to remember that his love is able to deliver even from death and put that love of Christ into practice toward each other. As with St. Paul and the Ephesians, the Lord strengthens us by his Spirit so that we face our suffering in faith toward God and love for each other. The letter to the Ephesians is part of what are called the prison epistles of St. Paul. That is, letters that were written by him from captivity. 2 Timothy, for example, was written by Paul likely during his final imprisonment and shortly before his death. But the letter to the Ephesians, however, comes during an earlier imprisonment, in fact, the one that we read about in the book of Acts. It is there that we hear that some leading men of the Jews took great offense at Paul's preaching of the gospel, and they took a vow to not eat or drink until they had killed him. For his protection, initially, Paul was taken into Roman custody, but that turned into imprisonment and then eventually to an appeal before the emperor himself. This was a multi-year event. And during his imprisonment at times, Paul faced hunger and need. There were dangers on the road and especially at sea, as the, the book of Acts has toward the end there. And then in the end, Paul's appeal before the emperor could have very easily gone badly and he would have found himself without a head, which did happen later under a different emperor. But danger and need were things that Paul had grown accustomed to by this point as an apostle. And so he wrote at the start of our text, I ask you not to lose heart over what I'm suffering for you which is your glory. And he wrote that because, in part, Paul's sufferings were in some ways overflowing onto the Ephesians. They weren't in physical danger, but they were still much distressed. With their pastor in jail, 
what would they do now? Were they still a church in the absence of a pastor? Or what's worse, people were claiming that Paul was in prison because he was a criminal. And, and certainly he was in, in the world's eyes, I guess. What then should the Ephesians make of a pastor who ends up in jail, even if it is for the sake of the gospel? And then maybe finally, one had to wonder whether the sort of persecution that Paul faced would eventually come to them since they too were believers in the free forgiveness of sins through faith in Jesus Christ. Because of all this, Paul wrote to them, I ask you not to lose heart. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father that he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being. Paul transitioned into teaching the Ephesians and us how we should respond as Christians to suffering, both persecution for the faith and suffering in general. The first thing is that we shouldn't be surprised by it. We heard earlier in the year, back in the Easter season, from St. Peter, and I preached on this text, where he said that we shouldn't be surprised at our trials and tribulations as though something strange were happening to us. That's what Peter said. And we know well also our Lord's own words, how he said, If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own, but because you are not of the world but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. We shouldn't be surprised when the world hates us, our Lord says, but we also shouldn't be surprised at our own everyday sufferings. It's not fun to admit, but our daily sufferings are what we receive through the fall into sin. The fact that we get sick and then eventually die or that we are, are sometimes met by failure and disappointment is because we are sinners. And whatever successes and joys we do have come by God's grace alone. And St. Paul's prayer for the Ephesians is that in suffering, they would remember that. He would have them remember that God had mercy on us and sent his son into the flesh to die for us on the cross. He has sent his spirit into our hearts to bring us to faith in Christ and sustain us in his love. Paul's prayer is that the Ephesians would draw strength in suffering from God's word. That through it the Holy Spirit would cause them to be both rooted and grounded in love. He would have them and us, instead of wilting in hardship, ground themselves in Christ's holy love and live in that love toward each other, knowing that in all things, Christ will deliver us. He is able to do, as Paul says, far more abundantly than all that we can ask or think. Paul's prayer for all Christians is that rather than lose heart over suffering, we be strengthened by the Holy Spirit through the Word and exercise ourselves in Christ's love. Paul prayed this for the Ephesians confidently because he knew what is well proved in our readings this week. The Lord is able to deliver from suffering, even from death itself. We heard in the Old Testament how the Lord had mercy on the woman at Zarephath. She herself was a widow. And although the Lord had sustained her family through the famine, he allowed her son to die. This happened so that, as our Lord said in John's Gospel, the works of God might be displayed. Through the prophet Elijah, the widow's son was restored to life. We also heard of our Lord's compassion in the Gospel. Because Jesus is God, he is able to deliver those who are his from all suffering, even from eternal death, as King David mentioned in our psalm. He is able to do this even for us. In fact, the Lord has already forgiven us our sins and delivered us from death in our baptism. 
in the absolution. He makes present again that same forgiveness won for us on the cross in the sacrament of the altar. He strengthens us in this faith and establishes his love within our hearts. The same things he does through his word as well. Through these means of grace, the Lord strengthens us so that we face whatever might happen in faith and in love. The way that a Christian responds to suffering is a faithful acceptance of God's goodwill and by occupying ourselves in his love toward each other. To that end, he strengthens us and he will continue to do so until he returns. The Lord preserve his word and sacrament among us always. May the Holy Spirit work through these things that we be strengthened in our faith and our love, knowing that the Lord will soon deliver us once and for all. In Jesus' name, amen. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite you to turn in your bulletin to the right of blessing for Bibles and catechisms. Uh, we do have a student who has begun a new course in confirmation this year. Uh, confirmation here at St. John's is four years long, and so we spend the first two years in the Scriptures, uh, this year in the Old Testament, next year in the New Testament, uh, and then we do spend two years diving even deeper into Christian doctrine uh, using Martin Luther's small catechism. Uh, but our student this year is just beginning uh, and will be receiving her Bible this week. But it is good that before she uses it, it is sanctified by God's word and prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord God, by his Holy Spirit, has caused all Holy Scripture to be written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the Scriptures, we might have hope. Such learning takes place when we hear the Word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart, and bear fruit with patience. It is fitting that this Bible be sanctified by the Word of God and prayer. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Let us pray. O God, you have given us your holy word to be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. We implore you to bless this Bible. Enlighten the hearts and minds of those who read from it, and open the ears of all who hear the gospel proclaimed from it that by your spirit they may earnestly hold fast to him who is the way, the truth, and the life, even Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless this Bible. Amen. We continue with the prayer of the church. I invite you to stand. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you sent your Son into the world to put an end to death. Keep us from losing heart in the face of sorrow. Strengthen us with power through your Holy Spirit and help us to know the love of Christ that through him we will no longer weep. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, you provide for our needs in countless ways. Protect all laborers, 
grant that their work would be done not from self-interest, but in love for their neighbors. Sustain the unemployed and underemployed and enable them to find ways to fully utilize the gifts you have bestowed on them for the benefit of all your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, in many and various ways you spoke to your people of old by the prophets. Now in these last days you have spoken to us by your Son. Spread your saving truth to the nations through your superabundant means of grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Comforter, you gave aid to the widows of Zarephath and Nain so that they would not be left alone. Provide faithful friends and companions to our shut-ins and those who live alone, that they may be encouraged in faith toward you and love toward one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, in his compassion, your son responded to the need of the widow in name and raised her son from death to life. Have mercy on all who are ill or receiving treatment, especially those whom we name in our hearts. Relieve them of their discomfort and grant them healing and recovery according to your will that they may glorify you in all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Ever-present God, as you once visited your people in the person of your Son, so Christ continues to visit your people now with his body and blood in the Holy Supper. Grant that those who have received the sacrament this day would receive these gifts in true faith, trusting your word, that in this meal the forgiveness of all sins is delivered to them by the Savior's own divine promise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament, beginning on page 208. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy Lord, God of Sabaoth adored, Heaven and earth with full acclaim, shout the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest, sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemn the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly bar them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. 
We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night on which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. I invite you to stand for the dismissal. Now this, the true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. We continue by singing the Nunc Dimittis. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you 
and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our closing hymn, hymn 683. 